Hello, hello, our colleagues and friends. Great to have you here joining us for another epic broadcast of the Matrix Momentum. <laughs> We're having uh, now with us our four wonderful colleagues, uh, three colleagues, four of us total. Uh, our uh, fifth uh, Matrix um, Maven is not with us, unfortunately, but uh, we definitely were going to make it amazing show and great uh, conversation on one of the hardest topics, <laughs> which we're talking about <laughs> thinking, which also goes into decision making and how do you manage that? How do you engage? So I wanted to say, uh, Javad, great to see you with us. Thank you for checking in. Uh, Bibinus, <laughs> uh, wonderful to see you as well, Asha. <laughs> and everybody else that is just joining. Before we really get this party going, we're gonna quickly check in on something fun and interactive that I think you might be uh, liking to hear as well. Uh, but uh, I wanna really ask quickly my colleagues what they think, what is this uh, critical thinking all about? And, and, and when did they discover critical thinking as the kids? It's different when we discover that as adults, some mischievous thing that happened when you were like, oh my God, I should think this through before I did X, Y, and Z. So Arvind, welcome. Uh, great to see you join us from uh, Berlin, being very busy with so many things and you're working currently on, but do you mind sharing quickly what is happening and what was one of those epic critical thinking moments for you when you learned your lesson? Yeah, hi, hi, good to see you all, everyone. And um, yeah, so I think like even this word critical thinking, I didn't know that for quite some time. And um, uh, and for me, like the moment, uh, you know, like um, for quite so, so much time that I always had this uh, self-reflection of like when I do something, I always uh, actually like thought, okay, what would happen if I'm in that person's place? You know, since I was a child, and it kind of has this dual, I don't know, kind of a dual personality inside. And like, you know, okay, I do that immediately. It just reflects. It doesn't take time. It just immediately reflect. And then with time, uh, I thought that, okay, even to even before reacting, you know, I started thinking, okay, what would happen if that, if I'm, I'm going to do this, you know, before it took a long time to do the same thing and then self-reflect after did the action and, but then started uh thinking before action and that is the moment i would say that i really uh you know very embarrassing moments and so it can be you know in different things and uh, and you know and then then i realized that okay this is a this is a thought process that we you know we really see if that is you know applicable it's contextual and if it's right you know it may be you know like coming from i can tell you one of the bad you know thing that i did Coming from uh, from uh, global south in countries, we don't have much um, uh, awareness of LGBTQ and you know homosexuality, and this is not openly spoken and so on. And uh, once I went to uh, to Madrid, and uh, and this host was uh, hosting me, a person in in crouch uh, crouch uh, couch. Uh, Couchsurfing is the platform where like people can go and just, you know, uh, uh, like you know, stay with people and then so on. And uh, then with that person, I went to um, uh, to another meet another person. And then uh, we were sitting all together and then uh, uh, we were discussing without knowing that he's homosexual. He is discussing, you know what, my homosexual, <laughs> like friends I met in Berlin, they told homosexual people will always wear a shirt like this, you know, like we were like kind of talking in front of this person without even thinking, you know, really like, you know, about it. And that's like, these are the moments. And then I started like, thinking, okay, how he was reacting, how he was doing. And then that's exactly, you know, it's a critical thinking for me is, is thinking before taking an, you know, an action and uh, many more embarrassing moments and bad things, but it's, it's part of a human learning, right? Yes, and a learning lessons, right? Mm -hmm. And it's opportunity that you could quickly at least be present, self-aware at that moment to see something is off and, and let me pause before I say something or before and then unintentionally I insult someone, right? 
How about you, Hamsi? Welcome from Dubai. Great to see you, our friend. How is everything going? And what was some um, embarrassing moment or, or painful lesson that you learned early on as a child where you did not discover the power of critical thinking yourself? How are you doing, everybody? And uh, uh, thank you. Of course, I'm happy I'm joining today from Dubai. Everything's good here. Yeah, and I can tell you that, uh, of course, uh, critical thinking and thinking that uh, about how people think or about uh, judgment or, or things like that and or feeling uh, like uh, guilty if you do something or yeah, of course, I experienced uh, this and it was uh, affecting, actually, I can say it was uh, affecting uh, my health for some time that I think uh, a lot uh, before doing something or I, or before taking a decision or something like that or or even before going to uh, to an exam, taking an exam, I would be very nervous and uh, and think about the, the results and all that. So I can tell that it was affecting my health. So I took a decision that during... Uh, university time that I will not do, uh, <laughs> I will not think that much <laughs> before doing uh, something. I will not, uh, I will just go for it and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and don't think that much about uh, like how people feel about uh, uh, all that. Uh, don't uh, analyze a lot of uh, things before, before doing it. Just, uh, just go for it. And I feel uh, that, uh, uh, my life was better, yes, uh, maybe I did not, uh, before maybe I used to get uh, higher degrees, for example, when, <laughs> when I do that, but uh, I feel better and uh, I, I got used to it and uh, and and it's better not, not to, to like um, think a lot about uh, everything, about, yeah, there are some things that you need to make some analysis, some uh, some critical thinking before, before you take the decision and uh, but uh, other things by by time by experience uh, uh, you will learn everything just uh, just just go for it yes and how sometimes that moment right you think you could even be okay and then yeah. actually as, as one of those pivotal doesn't moments, work out <laughs> doesn't work out right <laughs> and then you still like oh, i need to think through before i take action or make a decision yes. and then again how do we make <clears throat> those choices and decisions early on in life uh, because of uh, frankly critical thinking and decision making was not thought in school necessarily exactly. right exactly you get uh, you get teach that uh, through life that uh, that you need to think carefully and you learn it sometime of course at uh, at, at work when you start work that uh, critical thinking and how to uh, uh, to take a decision and uh, and, uh, and to, to to the benefit of, of the organization. So uh, yeah, it takes takes some learning uh, a learning curve till you till you learn this uh, mastering uh, the skill. I, I agree with you. Fantastic. Before we go to Shay, Doctor of Future State, I want to acknowledge our beautiful colleagues here that are joining us, that are amazing individuals. Please take a moment also to look at their profiles, connect with them. We have an anxiety coach that is teaching Bibin Ezansori amazing things around um, how to overcome an anxiety. Everybody's having yeah. anxiety these days. So I just want to say... Uh, please definitely check her profile. We're also having Astonish Chadari. He's an amazing individual who also has a great uh, thought on uh, numerous hot topics as well himself. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely check his profile. We're having with us um, uh, Doreen joining us from Toronto, from Canada. She's a personal branding coach and she's uh, having That's a lot of amazing. amazing things to offer and share there. So check her profile as well. But what we're also seeing here is a Deborah Jones. I'm so glad you can join us, Deborah. Hello, hello back to you. Check her profile, what she's up to. And we have another fellow Canadian, Dr. Samia Zafar, uh, right, to join us. So she's helping people that are seeking jobs and looking really to nail that down the next career path and find the job that they are destined to have. Uh, based not only on their skill sets but also their passions and strengths we have as joining us thank you as great to see you with us so with F, F, that oh my fave look at him Bipin, i'm super glad you're able to join uh, <laughs> you guys want to just also say he is super awesome he is definitely That's someone awesome. who can depict on current trends we are having global trends around the hiring around seeking talent and frankly around decision making so it's a perfect topic for to be here with us yeah. and if you need a help not only to figure out what that 
resume looks like, but also how to navigate this insanity with um, so many uh, obstacles and complexities, uh, virtual world with companies, with ATS and all the verbiage and keywords that I'm still trying to figure it out, mm -hmm. frankly, right? Um, but anywho, we are having Zena here with us. So great to see you, Zena, as Hi, she's Zena. saying hello to Arvind, someone she knows. That's fantastic. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So now we're going to Doctor of Future State. And how we're starting this conversation is obviously decision making, it's not being thought as well, critical thinking and educational systems, which is unfortunate. And I'm huge proponent and advocate to make the, the change around that. But till change is happening, we wanted to just go back in our childhood when we experience something like that and we start figuring out that we need to think through before we act or do something, right? So what was that pivotal moment, the painful moment, our embarrassing moment for you, Dr. Future State? Well, it's actually a very painful moment and sad story, Isabella. I had, a, I had a bad accident when I was younger. I went through a glass door, compliments of my brother slamming it in my face. But I, I, ended, up, I ended up, and that's just one of many things he's done to me over the years. And he's not good oh, for my I'm health. Sorry. And, uh, but I ended up slicing the main artery across my head, oh. losing three pints of blood. So I was very lucky to live. And um, But I got quite sick after that. And like I did study engineering. Like I've always been thought I was a thinker, but this was the first time I ever got really challenged about how to think because when I got sick after I lost so much blood, I was very weak. The doctor just gave me a dose of antibiotics. So I took them, felt better, and then a week later, it felt terrible again. Went back to the doctor, another dose of antibiotics. Felt good again, then felt terrible, and I went back again, and he gave me another. I said, doctor, why are you giving me more antibiotics? I can clearly tell you they're not working. And I refused them. And I just rode the storm then and i got through it but i've got i've also got another underlying a few number health issues right but that was the first time i really started to think why instead of just trusting somebody which you should trust in fairness your doctor your gp but you should if you want to look after yourself you need to you need to know and ask the questions of yourself because if i listen to other doctors and medical consultants in the system here I'd be currently on heavy statin medication. I'd be on beta blockers and I'd have a pacemaker, you know? But I decided any time they would recommend these things to me, I was telling me why, and they couldn't give me an answer. They could not give me an answer when I said, why do I need it? I said, well, that's what we do. That's, okay. that's, that's, that's fine for whatever, but you're not telling me why I need it, you know? So I ended up having to root cause my symptoms, my conditions, myself, and with a lot of trial and error and testing and a few hiccups along the way, you know, I learned to manage my own symptoms. I get checked regularly and I still, all my vitals are in perfect health now because I look after my condition with lifestyle and health. And I can tell you now, it disappoints me that other parts of the medical industry and other industries do not think like this. And in the medical world now, there's things called functional practitioners, which are very much along this line. I'm excited to see them um, take on board this root cause problem solving. Don't treat the symptom, treat the problem, the, the, the cause of the problem, and then it'll never come back. And that was really the first way I started to think like this, Isabella. And now I ask too many questions and I annoy the hell out of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that is a curiosity yes. that actually it's needed. And I'm sorry to hear how this turned in, but I'm also glad how you took Corrine's and questioned and how that served you and continue to serve you in your personal life and decision around your well-being, your health, what you put in your body, all the way who you affiliate, who you associate, who you work with and honestly uh given how traumatic that might be uh you know it's good that you don't have no of those visible signs that was early on in your in your childhood but i have to say as a girl that was a tomboy and would love to play with boys i remember my mom always say if you play with boys they're rough you're gonna get hurt you know mm -hmm. i used to play soccer i used to I uh, do rollerblading and which is now like a roller skating actually with those four wheelers, not the ones in the middle <laughs> like here, in, which I learned later on, uh, like a, like a ice, skate, ice skate looking ones, in the, you know, with wheels in the middle. Uh, 
but but took me a while, you know, and I was fearless. I had a scars, I had a elbows and knees cuffed, and I never worry about like what am I gonna do when I get older and, and how this is gonna look in my shirt skirt or whatever. Um, but I remember one particular instance that was huge for me and was extremely rough. Um I was shy kid initially, you know, playing and standing in front. And this guy, uh, the neighbor, watched the Bruce Lee and Kung Fu movies and just seen this little girl in front of him without ever registering, I am small, I am young, I am little, right? What he did is he performed one of his moves and now oh. to my front teeth. Oh, and wow. I remember. I felt like I'm gonna pass out, gush of blood. I remember for weeks I couldn't eat. Luckily there were not those permanent teeth, so I still have my own teeth, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting lesson learned there was, you know, <laughs> that when we kids watch the movies, that everything that it's movie done, we cannot necessarily do and repeat in reality, right? And yes. we learn, learn about tricks. We learn about things that are done in a movie that are actually um, not necessarily the real things. Uh, and then took us a while, but also help us to understand and differentiate and also understand the size, who you have in front of you, who is your opponent. And let me tell you, um, my dad was furious, but things happen with kids. And luckily I was able to recover. But for me was like, I still love playing with the balls, but I always tell him, don't be rough, don't be rough. And I remember when they will try to like, you know, elbow me or whatever, then I will hit for shins and they'll learn very quickly don't mess with Isabella because their shin's going to be in trouble because we didn't have their shin protectors or anything like that. So I just wanted to say you learned so many lessons and dynamics of the team, how you get consensus, because in general, we didn't have a drama, right? But was also yeah. oh, just let's have fun, let's enjoy it. And was really great servitude as, as Shea shared and you, Hamsi, as well, Arvind, which we're going to now deep dive in our topic. And reason why I wanted us to get a little bit of flavor if we go back to those moments uh you can't tell like oh my god this was studied in this topic right all of us are thrown in our life and business situations without really understanding these concepts fully right or learn them as we go and that is actually the nature of generations prior to us that really did talk about critical thinking but what happened is is like now we have to figure out what it's included in the critical thinking and, and, and how that reflects. So with that in mind, um, we're, we're talking about some of the things, I'm just gonna throw out uh, some ex exponential um, key ones. We need to be able to know how to observe, right? Do we have observation of the situation, first of all, and then, then to be able to assess it, right? How do we interpret? Because it might be different how one of us interprets something versus how somebody else would, right? How do we analyze? Because we need to be an, uh, able to analyze the situation. How what interferences we're seeing here to invest uh, to uh, paths of change of the behavior? They're not always one path, right? How do we do evaluation of that? How do we explain what are we dealing with? How do we bring the problem? Like you know, for me it was obvious. My mouth was bloody. Two teeth are missing. I didn't have to do much of explanation. My dad just wanted to know what and who. You know. Uh, Met method thinking also to arrive to the resolution. How do we really uh, propose different change and how we make sure that certain things don't happen again? So with that mm -hmm. in mind, um, I would love to hear from your Aravind, uh, because you're doing not only with technology, but you're doing with analysis and technological space. What are you seeing as some of these cr critical thinking components, uh, how they are crucial to provide great data analysis and as a result, better decision-making. Yeah, so um, yeah, on the tech space, um, something that um, uh, in the, the, the tech space that I work, like people have been a little bit aware of this, uh, you know, data science and so on, but then on my social side, uh, critical thinking is, is is, is a big thing that we we develop part of uh, you know certain media literacy and fake speech and uh, hate speech mitigation and all that thing so that maybe like later in the next uh, 
uh, I can explain how do we do that and why we want to do it and why it is the most important critical thing right now is to identify a fake, new, fake news and uh, to mitigate it. That, that's the most dangerous thing in the world now. So we do a lot of, lot of peace building and reconciliation work around that and enabling youngsters in the global south to develop their critical thinking especially for this misinformation fake information false information all that kind of a product propaganda uh, uh, that we we have we run a program called learn to discern and uh, in that we use certain uh, uh, um, analogies of a chicken and an egg uh, to teach uh, critical thinking maybe we can talk about it uh, later but now as of you mentioned about the uh, um, the tech and the, in, in the industry and the innovation so the biggest part that's missing or that people are learning to to adopt is that the events that happening in this innovation space they are very time dependent in innovations you know time domain they're in the time domain for example 50 years ago it if it took like 10 years to build as an electric car it does not mean the 40 years ago it will take another 10 years to build the electric car new innovation because it's that the whole thing is being accelerating and then the, 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 the acceleration is happening so that you cannot benchmark something based on what happened in the past and it will happen in the future. So in critical thinking, this is a very important aspect for the tech organizations and companies to update their decision making based on new evidences. And this is what people are missing in organization. They don't mm. update their decisions and no. they don't update yes. what they do based on new incoming data and, and evidences and that is what I, I tell people just keep yourself updated don't just you know be in a comfort zone because the whole uh, as you see the singularity we are in, in our world mm -hmm. in the knee curve and things are changing rapidly and and so you need to keep yourself updated otherwise we are just biased by uh, some decision uh, a simple example if you know J Jessica Alba she has a company called honest company why did she, she said that she wanted when her baby was born uh, uh um basically uh, she brought some uh, bought some baby products and they were using some materials so, so it's coming to material science which are not baby friendly so the thing is the company at the time when they made this product it was scientific evidence the evidence was is okay it's not making an issue but with the time and time and we learn like you know first we say that as we said yeah or oh, drinking a cow milk is bad and at the time we identified okay soya was an alternative and after doing another 10 years of drinking soya we identified that is also some form of a bad yes. and it's changing you know you cannot stick to that soya forever so exactly like that in jessica alba's company she decided okay these are the material which are baby friendly i will make an honest company but tomorrow this material that she believes is honest and baby friendly will not be baby friendly you know mm -hmm. so what's going to yes. happen do you going to change all your product and production line and the things and change everything so how innovations and innovators and organizations corporates can adapt to that you know the integrity and adapt to these evidence based uh, you know critical thinking and changing in the process is what i i i face day to day wow i love that wow yeah i totally uh, uh, agree and uh, with Aravind uh, about this because also i face this sometimes uh, like people with the uh, previous experience if you tell them my idea and the company they would block it right away they told you we tried this but it did not work but as you said Aravind, as we move and uh, and things change maybe the idea that didn't uh, work out in 10 years before it will be a boom this uh, in, in, in now so don't block it and uh, of course uh, uh, the, the the idea of critical thinking and high order thinking you have to listen to to, to each idea you have to understand what people are, are doing evaluate the situation uh, then uh, then apply and uh, and and remember remember the uh, what happened and uh, and uh, note down what happened and uh, this is this is all about high order thinking critical thinking and uh, problem solving uh, uh, process but i i resonated with you when you talked about that because i remember some people were always blocking any new ideas because due to previous experience what happened in the past uh, so it will not work out please uh, think of anything else or uh, we're just doing this uh, always and this is successful so don't uh, don't innovate don't uh, don't bother us with any new ideas hmm. like i think the the keyword that 
stood out for me, Arvind, to what you said, and I agree with everything Hamamzi said about what you said, amazing, is evidence-based, right? Yeah. Um, like, I, when I go into clients and I talk to, like, the first thing, I always do an assessment. And I always talk to multiple senior managers in different parts of the business, even though they may not be directly a part of the area I'm supposed to look at. But if I ask them what their biggest problem is or what the biggest problem in the area is, each manager, if I talk to 10 managers, I'll get 10 different answers, you know, because it's all perception based. They're seeing it from their perspective. And they always say, we need more people, right? Mm -hmm. That is the first thing I hear all the time. And I said, look, let's do an assessment process and then find <laughs> out what the problem is. Let's do the root cause analysis and find out. Let's gather some data. So if you have a perception, let's prove it. Let's get some evidence behind it. And some would be close enough, some would be way off. But nine times out of 10, you know, the answer is something different than what they thought it was, right? And the other thing is 10 times out of 10, resources is never the, never the solution. Wow. It's all about solving the root cause of the problem. Because here's the thing, when I've learned over the years, when I solve one problem, would you believe all the other problems fall away? Because that's the driving problem of everything in the business. So the first thing in your business is to drive out all the issues, right? So that's getting everything under the hood in order. And then to Arvin's point is to look at those trends of evolutions to see, well, what's coming next? What What is the data telling us now that we need to be prepared for in the marketplace, products, what the customers want, market economic scenarios? We need to analyze this data to ensure we can stay ahead of the curve. That is an excellent point. And what we're seeing here right now, let's fast forward at everything that we're witnessing at a snapshot at the moment, right on the global scale. Plastering more bodies never solves the problem because it is never an issue about number of people. It's always an issue around the process or how things are done a lot of times because outdated models and because we're not using proper decision making, right? We did not adjust our decisions based on the, all these variables that change. And a lot of times what we're seeing is what is, what is the reason behind the things we continue to do? Is it still relevant? It's still important. But one, in, uh, uh, one thing I wanted just to ask uh, and share here, because I love all of your examples, and from this decision-making cannot happen with the GAL critical thinking. In order to be able to critically think, you have to be able to know and make a decision based upon on something that is going on. What must be done? Why are we doing this? How well will be done? Who will be doing this? When will be done? What are we doing to get that happen, to make it, what actions, right? What interventions are required? Who will be measuring the success? And this is the part that we see people acting because they want to, they desire ultimately impact, but they're not necessarily questioning and creating this whole process and making sure that assumptions are still valid, that is still correct, that is still in domain, that is something it's still needed or whatever might be uh, the variable. And I love your assessment process, Shay, because it's necessary. And right now for companies to say this because we did this six months ago, even 12 months ago, with level of disruption, that is good, not good enough mm -hmm. anymore. And yeah. sometimes people are lazy and sometimes they just want to get it done. But who cares if you get it done if it's not the right thing or getting it done, right? Or in the right way. So gathering information and considering alternatives. And the reason I'm bringing this up, how much you guys have seen this demand for considering alternatives right now? During the COVID, during the lockdown, doing all the crazy stuff. Like right now, Australia, it's in lockdown. We're seeing other parts of the Asia, it's been still in lockdown. We're, we're seeing um, some Latin American countries where we're seeing so much disparity in terms of who is open, who can travel, where. where. Like whole world seems like it's in this crazy map and crazy variables that constantly change. And we have to constantly pay, pay, pay attention. And if we want to get something done, we need to look at different considerations so in that mind what some considerations are you seeing either in decision making process or examples with that with the with the, with the clients and, and just in the industry or around the critical thinking itself hmm. well yeah like, sorry go ahead Arvind. i mean in a simple way challenge every everything and every assumption just you know as as, as shai mentioned that you know because uh, uh, some medical protocol is 
written this way that you know if he's having this 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 is what you have to do and this is like you know a lot of things right. are just you know ba based on uh, protocol and, and assumptions and just challenge those things and i have developed that skill of reasoning reason everything you know that that really you know just don't uh, be you know fall like you know bias towards one side but like reason this side and reason that side you know what it happens and always try to find you know we never know the truth you know we don't even know if you are really we are maybe probably in the matrix attached to some <laughs> octopus brains you know we don't know and uh, so we so, don't know the variables right <laughs> yeah yeah so just challenge every assumptions and uh, and reason that, that's exactly it um Arvin. Yeah. Like every, like, and it's actually something when I do projects with marketing teams, you know, like, and uh, like, this is actually going back a number of years because and there wasn't the same data available. Like when you had to, when you were being, doing a marketing or building a marketing campaign, there was a bit of risk involved. So we had to create decision criteria for every assumption that was made in the campaign that X or Y or Z would happen. Then we made a decision, well, before we go into launch a big campaign, we're going to do a small campaign, a pilot campaign, and we're going to test all the assumptions, validate all the assumptions that we've made to see which ones are on, on, on par and which ones were not. And we tweak it accordingly. We would not go into a full campaign until we saw a certain percent mix in the game. That was our, that was our criteria. Now we can launch to the, to the, a big campaign because we've got the metrics right but we made it so that we weren't going to do it based on time it was going to be evidence and results based we hit a target then we launched now it's a different game the data in marketing is more like engineering and business analyzing at this stage because everything's there there's so much information but then becomes the other challenge is there's too much information it's not just kpis it's every pi and it's finding out which are the ones that matter to your customers, your teams, and your business. So it's everything, everything, to Arvin's point, everything needs to be challenged continuously all the time. And like sometimes decisions are easy, sometimes they're not. And I create decision matrices for my clients sometimes. And then every criteria isn't weighted the same. They're all weighted based on importance. So they can get really complicated. But here's the thing, it teaches clients to make good decisions and good process behind decision making as well because it used to be just that sounds good let's do that the wind is going yes. but now there's no need for that anymore there's always good data there to tell you what you need to do now and what you need to do tomorrow great yes 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 that's a great point uh, she yes exactly the data is there's there everything now is, is there on a click of a button like like we say but uh, it's the matter of uh, finding uh, the right uh, the right uh, data that's suitable for you for your client uh, uh, for your target audience and uh, and, and go ahead with uh, with that uh, with some analysis and challenge everything and i'd say also this uh, also in uh, in prices uh, in, uh, in, in in supply chain because i work in supply chain challenge and work with different uh, uh, check different sources for 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 the material and and challenge uh, the supplier in that check uh, make sure that you 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 know what what's happening the norm and uh, in the industry what's happening so you have all these information before it was very hard as you said to get all this uh, kind of information and you just go ahead with the with supplier you don't know the, the other uh, others uh, the competition what they are doing you don't know what's happening in the in the whole in the whole market so i totally agree with you but we're also having very interesting dynamic and I want to connect some dots here. Traditionally, for as long, obviously, for our generations and generations prior, we were expected to tap into our soft skills, right? But those yeah. skills were not taught in the school, which is, <laughs> is unfortunate. And now we realize, and, and I always said, let's relabel those. Those top 10 soft skills are actually essential skills because we're now having magnitude of issues. Why we're seeing so many organizations struggling? Because they don't have the culture to begin with that is very much so independently decision-driven in terms of, of framework for decision-making, let alone also for the management of the, of the of decision-making process or managing critical thinking. 
thinking. And critical thinking is now uh, absolute must have, must do. And it takes a long time for people to master. And the reason I'm saying I'm seeing this amongst the leaders, I'm seeing more as amongst managers, and they're supposed to manage and, and, and uh, others, and then I'm seeing amongst the talent, right? So when it's a crisis and when things are not as going as usual, it's very hard, as they will say, think outside of the box and be creative and come up with solution. But think about this, the top 10 soft skills are like, for example, communication. And, and, and not many people still effectively know how to communicate or communicate in a way that is clear and that is concise. Not everybody knows how to work very well in teams. Yes, organizations should build that up and we should have that by now. But all of those soft skills, as they call it, which are essential skills, are critical skills for critical decision making. Isn't it hilarious? And they're also essential for decision making process. So what we're seeing and what we're actually talking about in first place is why so many brilliant team members are struggling and why so many teams are not able to really uh, figure things out. A, because culture necessarily did not support it. B, they maybe did not master all of them or were, don't feel confident and good about it. And on top of it, they're not looking things holistically, right? And as a result, we're having so many issues. But one of the key ones that I'm seeing here is decisiveness. Um, because leaders are not only flexible and able to problem solve, but if you don't even know how to identify, how can you solve it, right? Or if you don't know um, who else is in your organization great at it or that particular skill, right? Then you will not be able to do it all yourself. But now we're seeing one fundamental issue, which is this decisiveness. And I'm curious what you guys are doing from your own enterprises and everything you do to show and demonstrate that magnitude of decisiveness that I feel everybody needs to hone and own and be able to replicate and support others. Yeah, so uh, uh, in my, uh, so in my, um, world uh, which I repeatedly push towards my uh, peers uh, to of one thing um, I will go from the top-down approach because we say the the best leaders have uh, they are not thinking they're taking decision uh, they are they are they are intuitive actually intuition is a fast decision making it's a form of a fast decision making yeah. how do we make a, such a fast uh, uh, thing as an animal so I'm um, leadership, yeah, decision making in, or the intuition, and then then below the intuition is basically a pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. So as an animal, like as especially humans, we are good at recognizing patterns, and that patterns happen in a rapid fraction of nanosecond. That is an intuition, and then decision making and leadership. But why we can actually make a pattern making is only through an observation. Mm. If you don't observe things, why this is like, you know, when you really observe details of that and then only the, the, the bottom, that's what I said, top from the leadership, the, the bottom part is an observation. And and I tell people when I, when I say that, okay, uh, uh, um, you know, certain things, and then they will ask me questions and again and again, I, I don't spoon feed that. Can you just read that sentence that again and look again and again till you find a pattern? Yes. And then they come up with the solution themselves. I never have yeah. to tell them what is the solution. Uh, that, that's fascinating, Arvind. Um, and I think it's such a powerful exercise. It's like what I do with my um, customers, like management, right? Like a lot of managers go into micromanagement mode if the team can't do anything. And that, what happens then? Team don't learn anything. They just learn that you can do it better than them, right? But like when, I, when they step back, and like allow their teams to get on with it give them autonomy yes they'll make the mistakes but when they make the mistakes then you discuss the situation with them you ask them key questions you ask them why you'll guide them in a certain direction to let them come up with the conclusion themselves because then you're not just learning more about them they're learning how to make better decisions in the future you know and this is where if you really want to create a team that can run your team like themselves when you're not there this is how you do it teach them to be really good decision makers never give them the answer 
help them problem solve so they can become a better decision maker in the future. Great. Very well said. Yes, Shay, of course, uh, we're creating uh, leaders. Uh, leader create leaders, uh, not uh, not followers, like like you said. So that's that's the only that's the only way. If you tell them what to do, always they will not use their their head. They will be dependent uh, on you only. And if you are not there, nothing will will happen. And and this is what what you don't want to do. Maybe some people have insecurities, so so they do that. But really, if you let people take the the decision and uh, and uh, drive them and give them the encouragement and the recognition about what they do, they will be leaders and they will uh, lead. Them. And, uh, and when you're not there, the, the nothing will stop. But uh, a team will, will be able to uh, to hold everything and uh, and take decisions and uh, and move forward. Mm. I love it, and that decisiveness right now, right? Because of complexity of the nature of the work, it's not anymore like we have a time and luxury. We have to be able to think on our feet because we stem still a lot of our work from crisis, the global crisis that continues. And I just wanted to acknowledge and take a second quickly here to say hello to the second group that just showed up here. We have a Jay with us. Hey Jay, great to see you with us. Um, I'm glad that you could join us. Please guys check her profile. She's doing some amazing work. Her content is great uh, and you don't wanna miss it. An opportunity to do not only learn from her, but also uh, contribute and connect. I been shared something really powerful here and I really wanted to uh, uh, affect because right now we're dealing with the invasion of so much information right and how do we depict and how do we know which information is now accurate and which information that is being disseminated through World Wide Web makes sense. We're also having Kim with us that is joining us also from Dubai. Her work right, is yeah. outstanding and she's a phenomenal in assisting uh, a talented job seekers to find a job in that region. Definitely double check with her. We have Amita who had to leave and Amita we're going to have a recording after this on my wall and I will make sure I share that to your profile, to your messenger so you have that. Absolutely. Uh, but now back to that amazing decisiveness and decision making requires speed, but requires also confidence, requires supportive team, requires culture that allows you to fail and not worry about consequences, mm. right? Not like when we were kids and you came home very late and your dad is pissed off at you, right? And you know you're going to be reprimanded and put uh, uh, probably on a couple of weeks, no going out or whatever might be decision, right? Yes. Or, or, or go or be able, as, to, as you said, Arvin, to listen to our instincts but also to build upon our wisdom and knowledge. And only way we're going to do that if we're doing something, right? Not from the books, not from the theory, uh, but also considering emotions of others and how other people will react to certain things, right? Um, but what I love about it is uh, that amazing opportunity to play devil advocates, right? It's like, how, what if we do this and play kind of forward and look at the options? We can go in so many different directions, but ultimately this is the best direction at this time and this is why right we need to know we need to understand we need to be able to um connect to that but um ultimately we lose sidetrack what are we actually in the end doing because it's so many competing priorities we cannot allow to lose the ball right yeah. of, of, of where we're going what we where we're at and where we need to actually hit the target with that ball and cross over but uh, we also have a tons of pressure and what we do with that how we handle that pressure and honestly, we've seen way too many times, I don't know about you guys, when people are crying over the spill milk. Things mm -hmm. happened. And doesn't matter now, point the finger, all right, you didn't do your job, or, or Hamsi, or whatever, or, or Shay, you could do this, and I expect you're gonna do that. We're running then in the blame and assumption and conflict, and then what that creates is fragmentation of the teams, right? Mm -hmm. so, so with that in mind, I'm curious, what were some of the things that help you to hone your decision making in personal or professional life? Because they usually say people that are great in decision making, that reflects and they're usually not only successful in the business, they're successful in their personal life and vice versa. Would you agree with that? And, and how did you hone that since you were not officially taught in school about that? It's, all, it's a really good question, Isabella. And I've always believed that like, life business and personal life are more integrated than people really give it credit for 
because you are one person, you know, and you, you do sometimes put on mirth for, or like different personas when you're in different environments. But ultimately, you know, you have to learn how one can complement the other. If you want to have a balanced, happy life, you need to learn how to make them balance. And a big part of that is how do you problem solve, like the life of work and the life in business. But for me, one of the biggest turning points, Isabella, to, to really hone in on this one, I started my first business and I was working around the clock and I do play a lot of sports. I've always played a lot of sports. And again, at the time, I didn't realize like I played like competitive and international sports. My goal was always to get better and better. But little did I know those skills that I was honing as a kid, learning how to be better at like I used to play a lot of table tennis how those drills when i found a problem in my game what's the weakness that i had to work on and then i'd work on it and therefore it became a strength and it wasn't a weakness little did i know that those mindset activities that grow mindset activities were the same things that were going to help me get over each hurdle i i came across when i started my business and when i when i've talked about this before about my sales process i i had no idea how to do sales i had to problem solve a sales process and build it as i go you know i had mounts to feed and i had to learn how to do sales by problem solving every time i got blocked at a step i had to figure out how it wasn't a roadblock but just a hurdle i had to get over or get around and i kept using that problem solving approach to actually get sales and that's what I teach now. I teach companies to problem solve their sales process. And I never thought, like, these are things I learned on a, on a table tennis table. I learned on a golf course that now I was using the same things to help me in business. And now I help it with companies, too. That's fantastic. That's How about you, Ireland? Yeah, so, like, you know, for me, the platform uh, was different, maybe. So being uh, born and growing up in a war zone, in a very kind of a different country, it's a Buddhist majority country, uh, uh, with uh, you know, like you know, you know, born in a in a. Sorry, I just. Uh, have to my camera. It's okay. We can hear you. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but born in a in a in a you know, the Buddhist majority country in a Hindu family, I studied in a Methodist missionary school, and then and. Um, all these different uh, ethnic and religious things and, and at the very young age uh, as i said like i was always looking into different things and maybe i was maybe 12 13 years old i started reading all these scriptures you know in, in a condensed version of bible quran and like you know all the in the buddhist lit literature hindu literature and try, just trying to observe and trying to find a pattern and one thing that always reflected me maybe i was 12 10 years old at the time when i read the Gautama Buddhas, whenever he was a prince, mm. he was uh, uh, as a rich, uh, you know, as a prince, right? You know, he had all the thing in his life, and there's a beautiful woman coming to the to the court, and she's dancing, and then he's at that moment looking at this woman, and and just because of all of the thing that he observed others outside of this palace, is thinking this woman is also going to be old and lose her energy and lose her charm. And then he's go. He's walking out, and he's seeing a, 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 a like a, a um, um, deer, like an antelope. And then he's uh, 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 he's just seeing that, you know, like you know, this antelope is gonna be like you know, so charmful, like a small small one deer jumping. And then he's also see that this this animal is gonna be eaten by, you know, another thing. So that self reflection of asking these reasoning things, you know, is everything what we do, you know, what what is the purpose? And he and and that reasoning that helped him to reason, reason several things based on the observations. He was doing so much observation. He was just sitting under the banyan tree, and then he was saying that he is actually his body is appearing and disappearing seventy thousand times in in a minute. And then later, you know, several thousand years later, in CERN, they found out that atoms are, you know, the quantum world is flipping at the same number what buddha mentioned maybe he was trying to sit and observe himself and and then trying to find uh, the you know you know helping that self-reflection so for me that moment i always put that you you know in, in a product and engineering world and the tech world we can call it as a user centric like what would happen if i am that user or if i'm in that position and i was just that kind of have been always in my uh, uh, mind to to think that way, maybe I don't know if it's too much or not. 
even here, like a simple example, I can just, just noticed it. I put this comment, but the actual link was like 200 characters, but I shortened it because I was thinking it will be easy for someone to look at it and, 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 and copy and use it. You know, someone naturally came to that mind and rather than copying and pasting, mm -hmm. because I always had this observing and it, if it, if someone's put a 200 character link, it'll be difficult for me to. And then I was thinking automatically like that. So for me, that's the, again, that like what happened with Shane and a tennis uh, and then the uh, table tennis uh, table or like in the tennis court for me that uh, growing up in that war zone and and having a lot of reasoning and self uh, reflection why it is happening actually made me to uh, challenge all the assumptions even now like is it really true is it is it that you know whatever you see you know is it a reality is it is it is going to be it's it is it permanent you know is it like that you know all that questions still i ask uh, to yeah that's my point that's excellent and yeah the critical thinking and how does you survive and navigate right but then also how do you thrive after survival so a lot of life lessons are the ones that contribute uh who we are today and how capable equipped we are right hamsi would you agree with that Yes, of course, uh, I totally agree. Like I said before, the experience that, that you passed through. And from experience, uh, I think uh, the best thing that for me, that worked for me is that like no remorse and don't uh, regret whatever yeah. happened because whatever happened is uh, yeah. you learn something from, from whatever happens to you. And uh, it makes you also think uh, why this uh, why this happened? What was my mindset during uh, that time? Who I was uh, surrounding myself with? This is very important if I'm surrounding myself with negativity, with negative mm -hmm. people, or even with people, uh, uh, even sometimes with, with family, to be honest, they think that you cannot do that or something. It's, it's about uh, who you surround yourself and it's about how you think about yourself. So if you choose to think about yourself that you can achieve anything, you will do it, and uh, and and uh, and you will find yourself attracting the people, the right people, uh, uh, like you guys, for example. To uh, yeah, the company, the company is it's very important to to be accompanied with with people who who think positive, who are are working on on themselves and. And, and this really can, can change your life and can make you uh, uh, take better decisions. So, so I think, yes, uh, this kind of, uh, of, uh, of thinking and surrounding yourself with the right people definitely will take you to the, to the next step and to, to be better. Yeah, I, I can't agree more. And one of the things that I'm also seeing, and I'm, that is universal truth, right? And we're in the world. All those lessons, everything that we were exposed to early from our childhood to young adulthood, and now obviously in the real world, that is never been as complicated and complex as it is currently in the modern times because we have so many uh, data points and so much information. Yeah. Uh, that is handling things slightly different. And with that in mind, I'm curious to leave our great audience with something actionable and tangible. What would you say would be crucial to, for them to be better either decision maker or critical thinkers? Because again, we have to those hand in hand. What would you recommend for them to do and, and, and how to master and hone that? Besides obviously taking a lot of courses and trainings and then practical application mm, well like my my simple answer is something that arvin said earlier on is challenge everything question everything and then when you question things you may not ask, ask the right questions but over time you learn to ask better questions and when you ask better questions then you'll see things better and, and then it's about what you do next with that information how are you going to make tomorrow better than today mm. How about you, uh, Hamsi? Uh, I'd, I'd say uh, listen uh, again, listen, listen, listen to, uh, and then then apply. 
understand, try to understand uh, something before you you apply from from the listening, uh, and then uh, act and and remember, as I said. Uh, so so make sure that whatever action you do, uh, you remember what happened, so that you don't if it's something uh, wrong, you you don't go on the same path again. So and by trial, of course, you will you reach you reach the right. Uh, the right path and uh, and you will reach your goals that's fantastic and Arvind? yeah so i think it's uh, um, as you mentioned i mean decision making is a is a the last end of the critical thinking and a lot of people they don't do something before it's just rash rapid decision so i don't think so it's, they are different things and why do we need critical thinking is to make a better decision so so it's basically how do we could how could we do it i mean there's also no success formula right formula here and it's always about <laughs> observe and and then reason that you know whatever you observe reason that observation and evaluate that uh, you know that reasoning and the observation if that is you know that's coming out of it and then you know take a you know decision making or problem solving uh, as a final step and that that combines together with all that we discussed you know how do we observe how do we reason how do we evaluate evidence based fact based and in, in you know what we can of course it's good to have a faith in all different type of uh, uh beliefs uh, but you know in, in the real world we need to take decisions based on facts and evidences that uh, we can see yeah so and then it's all together is uh yeah, decision making with critical thinking. Fantastic. And one thing I want to add, what I what I what I see, and I think that this could be very applicable. And I will post a little bit of this graph that I have. But it's really interesting because people never question how much time do we have to make a decision, right? How much is of the decision time? Do we need to make it today or do we have an extra day or two or when absolutely we need to know? And I really think that is the first step that I would highly, highly recommend for it to start questioning so that that gives you opportunity not to postpone and not to take things seriously, but to really get right inputs, right? So that you can really then look at and depict what's going on. One thing I almost learned, and I'm sure all of you will agree, depending who you're working with in an organization, will look for different things. Some will be looking so heavily around the risks, right, around that decision. Some will be heavily looking around the rewards around the decision, and some above just solely about impact. What impact this will create? So you will have to understand that because of dynamics of people, their roles, but also the way they are wired. Um, you have to take a look at those three prong approach with risk, rewards, and impact. And then some people will be having really interesting perspective. And unless you invite in them for having that conversation, you will never know piece of perspective that might be crucial to that chain process, right? Some people will think that, oh, we, we just got lucky last time. We don't understand the process or we don't understand the ingredients, what made us to really get there. But ultimately, if you know, how long do you have a time to, to drive the decision? What inputs and, and impact looks like? And as many perspectives that are crucial to that, you will be amazed how much you're going to be able to hone in, not only the decision making, but also critical thinking. And that critical thinking, guys, right now, I will highly, highly recommend to uh, start instituting and exercising and practicing and using as a part of your weekly me uh, meetings so that people start, even though you may not want to call it that way, start start using as different different components of it and, and from there driving better choices and decisions. Gentlemen, it was an absolute pleasure having this conversation with you and learning from your personal and professional stories. It was great to have Albert I'll join us from Mexico, Jay as well. Obviously, we have Abmita that was here earlier and other users. Uh, Kim, Salah, Vipin, uh, have a Dr. Samia, joining us, Zina, uh, Doreen, Debra, Az, and many others. Javad, I want to make sure that we don't miss Javad. But I also wanted to let you know that, again, it was an absolute pleasure to hearing your comments yes. and participation, and we look forward to more discussions. And actually, it seems like we have something here that I want to make sure we don't miss. Uh, uh, James was saying this the capsule operation structure and cooperation to deriving different decision making and to the laws yes. as well. 
And I love what you just said, James. I almost missed that it came late uh, as a comment, so my sincere apologies. But structure approximate, uh, approximately to your management levels. And you're right, if the management level is low, you're not gonna have a really good output in decision-making and critical thinking, right? And that's why everybody going crazy with managers, like, oh my God, they're asking me all these basic questions. They're so task oriented, right? But they're not oriented to solve the problem. And 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 that is the problem itself, isn't it? Yes, yes. Absolutely. I like uh, totally what James is saying because I can touch this uh, from uh, working in a lot of factories. Always the, 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 the small, the factory workers and the operational uh, uh, people, they have a lot of uh, great ideas, but they don't have the uh, encouragement to, to share their ideas. But if you sit and talk to them, like if we're talking about production planning or something, we're talking about this shift. Uh, people and uh, and the workers inside they have the great ideas to solve any any issues that happening with capacity any issues happening with the line so I like what he's saying yes a decision come a decision making should come from the, from the lowest level and you should encourage these uh, people to to share their ideas and uh, and uh, definitely their uh, their voices should be heard yeah agreed yes. Okay, James, great to see you. Looking forward to seeing you in the future on our lives and your wonderful comments. You're more than welcome, Dr. Samia. Great to have you with us. And the rest of you have a fantastic rest of the week and look forward to chatting with you soon. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.